Hey everyone, Darwin Sonoy here from GitLab. I am going to step you through some exciting new automation that we have for you. This automation is still technically in alpha, but what we're gonna to try to do in this demonstration is get 100 GitLab spot runners deployed on AWS in less than 10 minutes using less than 10 clicks. And then as a bonus, we're gonna to try to update those spot runners and see how long that takes. So let's dive in. We've had a lot of folks uh, tell us that it's kind of challenging to get runners deployed, especially in large organizations where you have to have a lot of different runners per team or large pools of runners for a lot of jobs to run. So I want to show you today something called the GitLab HA Scaling Runner Vending Machine for AWS. It is enablement automation that should make this a lot easier for you. The actual automation itself is very simple to use for simple use cases, but is quite elaborate and sophisticated under the covers. So if you need to do more elaborate things, it's a great place to start, even if you want to customize it. But there's a lot of functionality provided out of the box in the parameters that are given. So let's take a look at this. We're going to try to deploy 100 runners in less than 10 clicks and less than 10 minutes on AWS Spot. So let's take a look at that. So here's the repository. And when we look in the readme file, there's a lot of information here about the various different things it can do. We're going to actually go to the root of the repository to the readme. And when we look in here, we have something called the easy buttons. So these easy buttons are actually templates that will load directly into CloudFormation. So I'm going to pick number two here, 100% spot. Uh, it's going to do Docker uh, executor um, for the GitLab runner on Amazon Linux 2. When I click it, I have a variety of prompts here. So we just did one click to get in here. Now I'm going to copy and paste in a couple things. So we have, I'm going to change regions. Um, well, let's see. Okay, so change regions. Um, so for our first click, we had the loading the template. Second click is doing that copy. Third click is to paste it. I'm not counting switching tabs because I could have this open on another browser. Fourth click, fifth click to paste that. I'm going to go down here. Uh, most of this can stay the same. My size is going to be 100 runners. Oops. And then we'll go down, down, down. So that should be, oh boy, I might have lost count. Six clicks, seven, eight, nine. Now, when we trigger this stack, it's going to thankfully keep track of time for us. So you can see here we started it at 425, and we're going to let it run. And we should get 100 runners stood up very quickly on uh, Spot Compute. Let's take a look at some of the details of what this uh, automation provides while this is cooking. We'll go into this particular document, and we're going to click into Strategic Features. This sub document discusses a lot of the different features that are in here. So this is really designed around scaled out runner operations. If you have it, if you don't have it, these features are still convenient. So one of the things that's built in is maintenance, upgrading, downgrading, and scaling. And we'll actually see that at the end. We're going to try to do uh, upgrade or actually in this case, a downgrade of a hundred runners and see how long that takes. Uh, you can also, the, it automatically grabs the latest AMI or you can peg it if you need to. So if you have to be on a certain AMI or in a custom prepared AMI, say for Windows, it uses the latest runner version or you can peg that to the same version as your GitLab instance if you happen to be running self-managed. It also does um, GitLab runner naming that includes the the Amazon account ID and the instance ID. And the reason for this is if you have a lot of Amazon accounts and you may maybe even have more than one GitLab instance, it can get very confusing to simply find the runner out there in Amazon land or vice versa. You found a runner out in Amazon land and you're like, where do I find this in GitLab? So the tagging information on both sides help you locate all of that. Uh, it also supports Windows and Linux out of the box uh, with parity. So you can do Docker uh, Windows runners if you want, or shell Windows runners, and Docker Linux or shell uh, Linux runners as well. It's also extensible in, in that um, particular regard. 
So if you look in the repository files here under runner configs, we have four shell scripts for the two platforms. If you wanted to create a different one, you could create a different one. I have it on my planning docket to actually create one for Mac, and it should be fairly easy to extend this uh, to use Mac runners. Let's go back to our features document. Uh, some of the other things that are built in, so it has high availability built in. So if you deploy it with one runner, it has warm HA, which means if the uh, instance that's, that is your runner terminates, it will self-spawn a new one, and you'll have a short brief window of downtime while it st uh, starts a new one. If you do two, then you'll have no downtime, although you might have reduced capacity if one of them terminates. And then if you do three or more, you're just basically doing manual scaling, which also has HA uh, 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 with it as well. And then finally, you can schedule them. So you can schedule the entire ASG to shut down and start up at a certain uh, day and time uh, based on the built-in Amazon scaling cron schedule. So all of this is exposed to you in the parameters. In fact, when we blew through the parameters there, there was scheduling parameters we could have gone ahead and used in order to cause uh, time-based scaling to happen for, for scheduling that runner. Uh, also, we have cost and budget tagging. So when you use one of the easy buttons, we tag all the runners. And if you have a cost management tool for your entire Amazon um, installations, then all of that can flow up and you can see what runners are costing you across the board, wherever they're running and whatever accounts. Now, we support spot and on-demand compute. The one we're spinning right now is 100% spot, and you could spin a different uh, runner ASG with 100% on demand. In, uh, importantly, the information about whether it's a spot runner or an on demand runner bubbles right up into the uh, tags in GitLab. And this lets you select your type of compute based on what kind of job you're running. So you can say, hey, you know what, I'm testing, I'm doing mass scaled testing. If a few of the nodes terminate, doesn't really matter. So I'll run that on spot compute where it's cheap. Uh, you might say, hey, this job is going to sit here and pull for status and might sit there running for a day looking for status from some long running process. I don't want that on spot compute. If you're not familiar with spot compute, uh, terminations are not that frequent. And you can pick uh, within this uh, quick start, you can pick a scheduling methodology that reduces them even further. So they're quite low as it is. Uh, also, it's got a lot of security capabilities built in. Um, it will create an IAM instance profile for you. If you have your own, you can simply override it and peg it to that. It's also least privilege, so it always gives the least amount of privileges for everything and least config. So if you don't use something in it, it won't configure the item at all. Uh, it also has um, SSM built in directly, so you can get a console into a runner uh, from the SSM console. So let's check on where we're at with our stack. Uh, the e instance ASG is being created. So we'll go out actually and look in EC2. And you can see we have 100 instances running. Um, many are in the initializing uh, status. So that means that they haven't gotten started running our automation yet. I prefer to not put the runner binaries and all this config into an AMI because then you have an entire release cycle in front of this. And if you do your scaling, if you are auto scaling and you do your scaling correctly, it really doesn't impact you that much to have things spin up a little bit earlier and avoid having a binary uh, asset release cycle in front of updating your runners. In a minute, you'll see I can go ahead and downgrade this entire fleet in just minutes by changing a few parameters where if I was uh, burning everything into an AMI, it's much more static and much more uh, challenged, challenging to have dynamic management. Let's go out here and take a look at our runners and see if we have any of them registering yet. You can see we have 85 runners registered. So if you're familiar with the Docker machine runner, the way it scales is you have just one Docker machine runner in this panel, and then in the background, it's doing scaling of different machines and running containers on those machines. With this uh, approach, what we do is we rely on Amazon's scaling applianceware to do the actual runner scaling. And then within GitLab, each of those runners registers independently and GitLab then distributes the jobs to them. So it works a little bit differently. You'll see a lot more uh, runners in here. 
Um, because the automation is using both a um, termination hook as well as a launching hook, the launching hook lets us make sure that we don't put ourselves in service in the ESG till we're ready. That lets us do stuff like kernel patching and rebooting before being ready to take any jobs. And then on the terminating hook, make sure that we deregister all of these whenever uh, scale in happens. So scale in is where um, it, it's either auto scaling or you decide, hey, I don't need 100 runners, 80 will do, and you go change the scaling numbers, then it will scale in, well, it'll deregister those for you so it doesn't leave a mess in the wake. Let's go back to our cloud formation, see how things are cooking. Uh, we're getting a lot of our success signals in. Looks like we're complete. Okay, so let's subtract our times here. We have um, 32 minutes 51, and we started at 25.49. So if my math is right, that's about seven minutes. So we have 100 runners in seven minutes. Let's refresh here to see if all 100 are registered yet. And it says we have 100 runners registered. So there you have it. 100 spot runners in less than 10 minutes in less than 10 clicks. So that's pretty cool. However, it doesn't stop there. So this is, as I mentioned, engineered for long-term maintainability as well. A lot of times when you run into automation, it's designed to get you up and running. But then in six months, you're like, oh man, all these runners are too old um, how do I update them all? It's going to take me forever. Do I have to destroy everything and start over? So in this case, you do not. We're going to go into our stack. Now, it started as a root stack, which called a sub stack. And that was so we could hide some of the complexity of the parameters that are available in the underlying automation. So I'm going to go into my sub stack where the actual uh, instances were spun up. And I'm going to hit update over here. Now it's gonna to try to recommend me to go to my root stack, and in, in most cases that would be the right thing to do, but my parameters uh, that I want to access are not exposed there. So I'm gonna say, no, I do mean to do this. We're gonna leave the template the same. Then we go in and we can see all of the parameters. So this is how many parameters were really in use in the background, uh, and we hid some of those on the front end. So what we're gonna do is update this stack. Now I'm gonna emulate an upgrade by actually downgrading it. Uh, you can see here we could pick Linux or Windows. Uh, we can pick the ver a version of this particular automation. I'm going to go down here, and what we'll do is we have here the version of the GitLab runner, and it defaulted to latest. I'm going to say, oh, you know what? My GitLab instance is actually at 13.7. So we're going to force the version backwards. We're also going to go down here and say, you know what? We have figured out that 80 runner instances are sufficient. Um, we also can control the job concurrency, which was uh, hidden from us before. And then we're going to go down to some special update settings. So all the way to the bottom here. It's uh, asking me about specific um, settings uh, to do. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to leave the uh, instance uh, deployment strategy rolling through instances. I'm going to cheat a little bit and be fairly aggressive here. So our if you were really doing this in production, you might, out of our 100, or what will end up being 80, you might only want to do two or five at a time so that your capacity isn't impacted too much. Um, but what I'm going to do is make it go a little faster, and we'll do 20 at a time. And then the minimum number of instances in service at any given time. So this is like the low end threshold of the fewest number that uh, you would want running. We could have done stuff like peg our AMI. We could be upgrading our AMI. We could be going forward or backward. It doesn't matter. I'm going to hit next, next, and acknowledge and update stack. So if this all works correctly, um, what's going to happen is it will roll through our ASG and we'll see it terminating instances, starting new instances with the new configuration. In the GitLab panel, because we are doing the termination hook, it'll deregister the current ones as they are taken out of service and it'll re-register the new ones and we'll start to see the version of, you know, a portion of our runner fleet will be at different versions at any given time. I'm just going to refresh this here. So it's saying update in progress, which means that it should have started um, working on our instances. I'll refresh here. And uh, oh, I was going to change the instance type two, and I forgot. So it'll be a little harder in this panel to see 
um, what is actually changing. We'll go here into our GitLab uh, runners panel. Um, we should have 20 of them terminate fairly uh, quickly. Go down to 25 here. Everything's still at 1311, so we haven't really gotten significantly underway yet. I'm going to sort on instance state. And we'll go to our second page here. So here you see initializing. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Uh, new instances initializing. So it is <clears throat> starting up uh, new instances. Look here, we have 83 instances. So it terminated 20 right away because we changed the total number. So we don't need to upgrade those 20 just to terminate them. If we go back to GitLab and refresh, uh, we well, it had 81 there for a second. Now it's got 60. Uh, so we're in an in intermediary. So we also said that we're, we're going to process uh, 20 at a time. So what has happened is we terminated 20 because we're going to come down to a total of 80. And then it terminated another 20 to cycle them to the next version. I'm going to check the other end of our spectrum here. Okay, so now you can see we have 13.7, 13.7. So these ones have already been cycled and they're cycling through to a different, to our new config, which in this case we're, is a downgrade. Let's see how far along we've gotten. Page five, there's four per page. So we've done 20. Page six, um, we start with the, um, the, the, you know, we've done, we've finished 20 and now it's gonna start cycling on another 20. So you can see that the maintenance built in is also uh, really handy to be able to now manage this runner fleet going forward. It's also actually very easy to just destroy the whole thing and set up a new one if you need to. Um, also the vending machine, you can do it as many times as you want. So think about some of the runner situations that you might have. You might want a large common fleet for your entire um, GitLab instance that are kind of like your version of shared runners. Um, or it also, by the way, this works whether you're on GitLab.com or your own self-managed instance, it works the same. Um, let's say that you want um, special runners for deployment and they only need to be running on the weekend because you only do deployments on the weekend um, and you need one per account. So you could use this to vend uh, a runner to each of those accounts and put it on a schedule so it's only running during the weekend. Uh, then let's say you have runners per each development team and some development teams are not global. They're in a certain set of time zones and they only work during weekdays. So you could set that one up and schedule it so it only runs during weekdays. Any of these can be run on spot that you're comfortable with running on spot. So I have a hundred instances running on M5 large and maybe you can guess how much it would cost me to run these for an hour. If you guess around five dollars, you're right. So it's not going to cost me more than five dollars to run these 100 instances for an hour. That's not even a Starbucks coffee. So the savings in spot are are incredible, but the savings in scheduling can add on top of that. So you can really start to get your compute for runners uh, really low, even if you're quite quite scaled. Let's take a look at what's going on with the stack. See how far along we are. Update is still in progress here. Uh, if we look at our um, runner registrations, well, on page 10, we've got 13.7. Let's go to page 14. And we've got 13.11 um, once we hit page 14. So we've, we're in the midst of cycling another 20. You can see here, let's see, uh, can't sort on status check. Um, could sort on launch time. If we go back to page one. Uh, so we're just chunking through um, the ASG. If we wanted to get a better de details on where we're at, we can go to our auto scaling groups. Um, we can dig into the auto scaling group. You can see here we have 83 instances now, desired min and max. And then if we dig in, we can see activity and we can actually watch what's going on here. So we can see um, how many are being terminated, what life cycle uh, section they're in. Let's see if we get right to the end here. 
Um, so here's successful terminating. Um, and if we had any that were um, in a status of um, uh, either their, their pre-launch uh, hook or their terminating hook, we would be able to see that as well. So you can check it all out. And what we'll do is, I should probably refresh this actually. Um, once we have um, all of them cycled, I want to take a peek at the time and see what it took us to cycle through all of them. Page 15, we're not done yet. Page 12. Okay, so we're continuing. And when did we start our update? Great progress. So this is just a running log of what's been going on in our cloud formation. Uh, the cool thing about doing it in cloud formation, I, I could have gone into the ASG and altered it directly. Um, but the problem is, like, if I want a different GitLab version, um, well, I couldn't do that in the ASG. But it, basically, even if I alter the number in here, then the stack keeps the state. So the stack knows you're supposed to have 80, um, where if we go in and change the ASG directly, um, then the stack is out of sync. And so update in progress. Uh, it even tells us here, rolling update initiated. Um, we'll be doing 80 instances in batches of 20 while keeping at least 10 in service. So that started at uh, 37 minutes after the hour. And then if we go back to our top, um, we're now at uh, 42 minutes after the hour, so we're less than five minutes. Uh, let me just quickly take you over and see if there's any other things that we haven't talked about. Uh, so for Linux, we support ARM. Uh, so you can do everything on ARM if you want to. Um, we also use Amazon Linux 2 for the runners, and that's because Amazon optimizes Amazon Linux 2 to run on their system. So just running the regular distro on a full-on operating system uh, is more lean. And then on top of it, they have the newer version of the kernel. So technically it's a CentOS 7 binary compatible distro, but they have the newer uh, kernel. And so they can use the newer Docker overlay drivers, which speeds up Docker a bit. So there's a lot of benefits along that line. I didn't mention earlier that we support mixed instances policy, which is one ASG that has some spot and some on demand. So you can say, give me 50% uh, spot, 50% on demand. And then each of those instances is self-identifying for those tags. Uh, we didn't look at the tags. So if we go up to the top here, the tags show us the OS. They show us the GitLab executor. In this case, it's Docker and the compute type. So it says dash spot. If these were non-spot, it would say dash on demand. And then AMD64. So it's telling us what the uh, hardware architecture is so that if this was ARM, we would see, I believe, ARM64 there. Uh, so you can target jobs based on those attributes uh, of the actual um, uh, uh, compute that's underlying. Double check here again on our status. And we'll refresh our console here. 65, occasionally while it's doing this, it's it's not too worried about a few extra instances hanging around while it is uh, cycling through. So on page 17, we have 13.7, page 19, page 20. So we should be done. Let's check our stack. Uh, CloudFormation takes a while to register uh, sometimes. So it looks like this is probably like our last successful um, uh, cycle uh, so it cycled through and then we'll try to get a final time parameter here um, and if we go to our instances panel again uh, if I had changed the instance type which I had uh, intended to do we'd also be able to see them cycling through here on the uh, instances panel we're now down to 80 so it did what we asked it to by reducing uh, to 80 Update is still in progress. Um, I guess we could niggle about what is just a standard uh, delay here. Let me quickly 
grab the start time. So, uh, oh, this is create, get to the right place here. Okay, so 37 minutes, 14 seconds. And update complete, 47 minutes, 43 seconds. So just over 10 minutes. So this has been 100 spot runners provisioned in under 10 minutes and under 10 clicks and 100 spot runners updated in about 10 minutes and about three clicks. So I hope that this uh, automation is something that you will find valuable. You can find it out on Guided Explorations AWS. So gitlab.com guided-explorations slash AWS and then GitLab HA Scaling Running Vendor Machine for AWS. Thanks for your attention. Please let us know if we can be of any help.